An army marches on his stomach, said Napoleon. But how do you get the grub into your army's stomach? It's evolved through time, right guys? In the old days, Napoleonic era, they lived off the land. They would plunder and pillage bankrupt farmers, take their animals, take their grain. Uh, but then things became more standardised. The idea of a mess kit was invented and standardised mess kits for armies came into place. You know, Napoleon wasn't actually a short man. It was recorded that he was five feet, two inches tall. But in the pre-metric French system, a French inch was larger than an imperial or a British inch. So he wasn't actually five foot two in our day, today's measurement. He was actually five foot five, nearly five foot six, which was uh, just a snadge under the average for the time. In the mid to late 19th century in the Swedish army, you could well have been issued one of these. This is a copper tinned mess kit. So this is a Swedish military canteen kit, mess kit, call it whatever you prefer, from the late 19th century, 1875, maybe a little bit early, 1865, up until around 1895, this was the model that was in use. Now, as we get into it, you're going to see that this has got basically the same DNA of the mess kits that have followed through for the military ever since then, for nearly 150 years. Now, around the time that this was built, this became vogue in nearly all European military um, circles. This basic type of mess kit, this was what was decided, okay, this is what we need to give our people. So although this is the Swedish model, this would have been common in principle to other militaries of Europe of the time. The construction is of copper, which is tinned. Now you can see the tinning on this has become uh, corroded over time, tarnished over time. The reason it is tinned is because, not because copper is poisonous, but because uh, certain um, acidic sour foods will react against copper and give you a bad taste. It comes in two parts. This is what's commonly known as the frying pan, although of course it doesn't look much like a frying pan we use today, but it's a shallow cooking pot and which has got the handle built into it. And the handle, and this is going to be a com common theme of the Swedish mess kits, has got two loops in it. And these loops are for, one finds a stick you push it through the loops and then you've got a heat proof handle or an extension so you can put it over your fire. I've had many people on my videos describe these loops as designed for a bayonet. Now these loops are common from the 1875 through to the 21st century basically and the size of the loops never change. But the size of the bayonet in the Swedish army and the type of bayonet changed considerably during the last 125 or whatever years. So I'm not so sure that this is actually designed specifically for a bayonet. You could use a bayonet, certainly, depending on the size of it, but is it specifically designed for a bayonet? I don't think so because that they would have had to change the size of the loops depending on the, uh, the size of the bayonet over the years. The second part is the, the saucepan or the large container. Here you can see it's got a crown and a number on it. And on the large container is a bay alarm and a hook. So you can hang it over your fire. The construction of this copper one is basically copper plates bent around and then brazed together. Chuck that in your backpack and away you go. In 1895, the Swedish army introduced this model, made out of aluminium. They introduced it for a couple of reasons. Cost, aluminium at that time was a cheap material. Ease of manufacturing standardization. This was traditionally built in uh, like small workshops and they wanted to go into large scale industry, industrial production. Aluminium, lighter, another reason to introduce it. The tinning of the inside of the copper tended to wear away over time 
become a brace through that would reveal the copper underneath then of course that's pointless having the tin and then you've got the exposed copper spoiling your food so the main difference was the change in material slight change in design but not a big one they've made it slightly wider a little bit wider obviously that's always going to be useful height more or less exactly the same the underlying features not much difference at all if any you've still got your two main parts the frying pan part and your large vessel and what i didn't mention previously with the copper one is that this is actually they're designed to nest like this this is a really tight fit on this because it's become buckled over the years but basically you see the lip here that's supposed to fit inside here so you can carry the two things together maybe the bottom one keeping the top one hot or just because it's convenient you can see how that works on the copper one actually the copper one despite being significantly older is still a much better fit back to the 1895 model you've got the loops again you can push through any old twig for um, a handle that's exactly the same the bay alarm is exactly the same one bay alarm and one hook for hanging so apart from the dimensions being slightly different the material being different this now being aluminium is exactly the same as the one from the 19th century this is introduced in 1895 this model stays in use in aluminium until around the first world war period when aluminium became scarce and still became more readily available so they stopped manufacturing in aluminium and they started to manufacture in steel instead but the same design i don't actually have that version to show you but it would look exactly the same but made out of steel so this style stayed in service either in aluminium or uh, steel until actually 1940 when the swedish army introduced the m40 model this one is not an m40 this is an m44 the difference between this and an m40 is the M40 is made out of steel. The main components of this is made out of aluminium. I'll get into that. But why do they change from something like this to this? Basically, it works the same. But in the middle of the 20th century, the fashion or the prevailing uh, doctrine was that the average foot soldier would now basically produce their own food or cook their own food in the field using small rations, which would become, which is, much more common than it had been up to that point whereas previously you would have field kitchens the fashion came in that you would expect your soldier to warm his own food and carry his own rations for a you know for patrols and so on and so forth so they wanted to add some more features to it so the features they've added to it as well let's just go off the bat you can see it's a different shape now it's no longer that kidney shape here in the 1895 model you've got a fairly pronounced kidney shape in the copper one you've got a less pronounced kidney shape but it is slightly there so they've gone from kidney and they've basically gone back to an oval shape or gone to an oval shape and it's squatter so you've probably got the same volume but it's a a broader squatter design and you're going to notice this right you've got the cooking shield where you can put a uh, alcohol burner in that or you can put that in an open fire and then balance your pot on top i've got a whole video just about this 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 uh, kit so for more info please check that one out mainly i just want to compare and contrast to the previous uh, generations models so but let's get into it now you're going to see okay no surprise here the frying pan a little bit broader uh, deeper than the original copper one about the same depth as the 95 model and it has of course those loops on it for pushing a stick through for your handle and these loops have not changed size for 75 years where they've definitely gone for a few generations of bayonets so I'm not 100% buying into the bayonet theory this is a design feature that survived virtually unmodified for 150 years and that's the ability to take the hook on the bay alarm and you push it through the uh, the latch loop here and that gives you 
the ability to stably hold the container without burning your fingers with one hand and then use a spoon or a fork to get out whatever the contents are. Super clever idea and that's why it never changed. And here is a little bit of a bonus to add in, same type of generation. This is the Swedish Army uh, cutlery set, nesting cutlery set. So it's got the three crowns on it for the Swedish, representing the Swedish Army. So this would all have been commonly used together. So there you've got it, 150 years nearly of uh, military canteens. And you can see the principle never really changed. It was a good idea and it was kept in operation for over a century with only material changes. And then the idea of going to, actually this would be your whole camp kitchen in the mid 20th century. So they added parts to it for that. Till next time, take it easy.